What's going on, everybody? Welcome to Real Time with Naeem Chaudhary, where I'm keeping it real all the time. It's been a while since I've done a real time. Yeah, real time was uh, taking a little bit of a break, but I'm glad to be back. Thanks for all the hits, and uh, been really enjoying all the comments. So basically tonight, what real time is going to talk about is the NBA lockout. And so, so disappointing after such an incredible NBA season. You know, watching uh, the Dallas Mavericks, you know, uh, you know, after years of servitude and finally beating, uh, you know, the big three. You know, it was a very exciting finals. And, uh, you know, the NBA draft, you know, it's looking like you know, it was going to a great direction. But, you know, it seems like now that the NBA might be going for a shutdown just like they did in 1999. And uh, I just really hope that doesn't come to that. So basically, you know, there's a whole bunch of reasons for the lockout. And... Uh, you know, the owners are, you know, saying that right now that a lot of the teams now in the revenue side are in the red. And the owners are looking to break even with this a formula they get basically come, come with called the basketball-related income, which is BRI. So anything that's like ticket sales, TV contracts, parking, beer, and like basically most of, you know, not fines or revenue sharing, but, you know, right now the breakdown is owners are 43% to the players 53%. So the biggest stumbling blocks right now is owners want to cut salaries of players roughly one-third and put basically a very hard salary cap, which wasn't there. And uh, the, what they want to do is eliminate, like, accept, uh, exemptions, exception signing bonuses, or deferred compensation in some way. You know, uh, so this week the owners came out with the proposal of some, uh, like basically a 50-50 split, very similar to what the NHL has. So the players right now, they're still not ready to basically take a massive pay cut. And they're opposed to taking anything that they see as basically a salary cap. So on Tuesday, uh, they had a the, the players union and the, and the owners had a, th a three and a half hour meeting in New York. And the commissioner, David Stern, uh, basically, you know, said that 50-50 as far as that they want to go. And the current, what they call the CBA, the Collective Bargaining Agreement, expires on June 30th, and which the owners at that point are probably going to lock out the players. Uh, I mean, at this, at, at this point right now, you know, the owners are presenting what they call a flex cap system, which insists that the players as a whole of the league will get $2 billion annually in salary and benefits. And that's everybody, all any any player in the league. And the players come away with that they view this flex cap as nothing more than a very macro, you know, uh, hard salary cap, which none of them want. And they believe that almost 40% of, you know, what they're going to be getting is going to be lost. You know, so Derek Fisher is the president of the NBA Players Union, and they're gonna, and he basically even said that they're gonna have a very tough time of you know getting away from the salary, the hard salary cap. But the league is now saying with the owners that 22 teams out of the 30 teams in the league are basically uh, up to, up to past this season are looking to lose almost 300 million dollars. So now, what does real time think? Uh, you know, real time. You know, you know, I'm gonna keep it real. And, you know, I'm actually going to take a side on this in this scenario, and I'm actually with the owners. You know, right now I'm looking at it, and basically we see bench players make more than a team's star. You know, you don't see anywhere in the world like a doctor making less than a physician's assistant, a sheriff making less than a deputy. You know, a prime example is, you know, backup Brendan Haywood. You know, he's making $11 million a season. That's $8,487 for every minute he's on the floor. He's averaged a whopping four points and five rebounds a game in 18 minutes. Derrick Rose makes $6 million a year. 
His teammate Ronnie Brewer averages three points a game and two rebounds is making five million. Dude, that's whack. Kobe Bryant, who makes twenty five million, you know, league's best player, number one in basically marketing, franchising, you know, I think he deserves his money that he's getting. But then you guys conversely you have a guy like Luke Malton who sits making five million dollars, averaging one point and one rebound. It's the same thing with the seven million that uh, Cleveland's, uh, you know, Varejo is making. You know, making seven million dollars for you know nine points and nine rebounds. I mean, this is ridiculous. You know, I think that a lot of the players are overpaid, and they there really is something that we have to draw the line. And also guaranteed contracts. I don't believe in guarantee. I mean, I mean, I love Yao Ming to death, man. But you know, look what happened to Orlando. You know, with uh, Grant Hill. They had to pay eight years. He played only one, you know, and he couldn't get anybody new. Tracy McGrady, same thing the Rockets went through. I mean, but maybe, I mean, I know this sounds kind of harsh, but if you're injured up to a period of time, you know, maybe pay back, you know, have the player pay back a penalty or something of some sort of their salary. But anyways, man, you know, at this point, we don't know what's going to happen. But hit me up with the comments, everyone. You know, it's been real, and uh, I appreciate all the hits. <laughs> Keep hustling.